Hi, I'm Trenick here at Epso's Dive Shop in Gatineau, Quebec, and I'm the former owner of a CUDA 650 and the new proud owner of a Piranha P2 from Dive Extra. I loved my CUDA 650, but uh, it's time to time to upgrade, and I'm here to uh, do an unboxing and review video for you guys here today. All right, now for the unboxing. So it comes in a pretty simple package, um, standard. Uh, cardboard box. Now opening it up. A bit of packing material, all cardboard. They swapped to uh, recyclable material having gone green and trying to reduce the, uh, the waste which is of course good for the ocean and not have plastic in it. It's a fairly simple, simple kit. You end up with just the scooter already pre-built with all the modules. Now batteries are not actually included. You'll have to buy them separately. They do offer them on their website for sale, but if you have your own particular manufacturer that you'd like to purchase from, you can always uh, order that. But just remember to order batteries either from them or from an independent supplier when you do buy your scooter. So there's another box, which I'll be looking at in a minute. But really the main Thing that you're going to want to look at is your scooter, which is already ready to go. All right, so the biggest change from the CUDA 650 is the modularization of pretty much everything on the scooter, and what that does is it allows you to change the capacity, change the range, and carry less weight if you don't need it. Now, they added these ring modules, which is what actually differentiate between the P1, P2, and P3 models. And they actually went one step further and modularized the batteries themselves. Now, this is done so that you can actually fly with them, despite being lipos, as well as change out dead modules, which uh, can sometimes go over time. Now, um, this is more of an issue with the CUDA 650 with the nickel metal hydride, but nowadays with the lithiums, you're probably gonna be quite the service life. Now, we also uh, can see that they moved from the old motor design, which was a direct drive, to one that is geared down, so allowing a high RPM, uh, higher RPM spins, probably more efficient, and it's got an easier access to the speed controller. Very clean on the inside, much lower weight. Now, that's the other major thing that you notice about this thing when you actually see it. It's this is way lighter than the CUDA 650. Um, we used to be about 50 pounds. It was like carrying a, an, an 80 cubic foot tank into the water with you pretty much every time you'd go diving. Whereas this thing, it's really, you could pick it up with two fingers. And um, I quite like the construction. It's all metal. Uh, where it is plastic, it's still very solid. Um, you're really not gonna, gonna break this thing. And with the 650, uh, it held up to an incredible uh, amount of abuse uh, diving in the St. Lawrence. Now, in terms of power, uh, you're really not going to use the highest level on this thing. It's enough to free flow your regulator if you're using a uh, forward uh, exhale, but uh, you're still going to, if you need to, want to be able to use that. And I think at 63 pounds of thrust, that's going to be more than sufficient. Um, Really, we would sit mostly on the third setting on the 650 for just about any dive, even in like a two or three knot current. So uh, going up to uh, the max setting on this and being able to stay there with the uh, 800 to uh, 1200 uh, watts of capacity should really, really be interesting. Okay, so moving on to the spare parts box. You get a small bag with your thing, and included is O-rings, prop blades, thumb screws, your uh, replacement handle, uh, replacement uh, uh, mask strap, and a couple other goodies. So, going into it, you've got your Dive Extra brand mask strap, so you can represent your. So included is a left handle in case you want to swap the sides for which you're using your scooter. You've got a, another tow rope, spare O-rings, uh, which are of different sizes, so you'll need to remember to install those uh, carefully. You've got trim weights to adjust the scooter's buoyancy if you want to install other gear on it. You've 
got another uh, throttle lock screw, and lastly, a spare propeller blade in case you break one. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys how to put this thing together. You start first by connecting your battery module, and you're gonna do that empty uh, and install the batteries later. So first up, you're gonna just connect your motor cable, add In. Before you add the next module, you're going to want to make sure all of these batteries are fully charged and working, so you're just going to activate this and turn it on. Now, be careful because once this is turned on, the batteries will start draining, so make sure that uh, if you're planning on storing the scooter, you don't leave it in this mode. So, uh, However, as you can see, all batteries are functional. Uh, you wouldn't have them all light up if they weren't. It indicates which ones are working and this is the way, uh, where you'll connect your next module. Okay, like the previous module, you're going to want to hook this up and just go with like colors. Once installed, just tuck the cable in to the slot here. And there's again, a down arrow. You want to just line it on the o-ring and snap it in place. Once that's done, you can install all batteries. For the last module that you install on the P2 or P3 or P1, you're going to want to leave the upper right one free to tuck the cable in. And by what I mean, that's going to go in like that, just to keep everything nice and clean. Again, make sure to turn it on, and you can add your cap. So, this is part of your trimming system. This is gonna have to be the one that faces down. Uh, it is adjustable, meaning that you can add uh, uh, you know, a certain torque to the scooter if you don't like the way it sits in the water. And you're gonna wanna make sure that that is down. So line it up with the arrow so that the handle is in place. And again, float it on the o-ring and push in. Your scooter is now sealed. As you go underwater, the water pressure will actually hold it shut. And uh, of course, these o-rings are pretty tightly on. But just to make sure, there's a strap that you can then use. Okay, once the strap is in place and it's adjusted properly, you're gonna to wanna to leave just a little, little bit of slack in it and pop it in place. Your scooter is now pretty much ready to dive and hooked up. It's not going anywhere, it's very solid and very lightweight. All you have to do now is unscrew the throttle switch when you're actually ready to use the scooter and your reed switch is here. So one note I wanted to make on this scooter as well is the biggest change and I think the, the biggest reason to want to buy one of these. It's the fact that they've modularized the batteries. So the ability to do all the servicing yourself, to charge these things quickly using a standard drill battery charger and to have your power unit basically broken down into these um, easily swappable modules. You're not going to need a technician, you're not going to need uh, to purchase expensive units uh, at you know a thousand to two thousand dollars each or more and uh, it basically just makes your scooter have an almost infinite service life. The reason that we started to move uh, away from the 650 was really centered around the idea that the battery started to drop off. Now of course uh, lithiums tend to do that a lot less but going from uh, an expensive battery module that was proprietary and being able to just go down to Home Depot and get a $60 battery or something like that, that's, it's practical. And it means that you're never really going to, to run out of juice. Um, it also allows you to, uh, between dives, swap out with just commercial batteries if you want that extra range on multiple consecutive dives. So 
it's uh, it's definitely an improvement and, and really I would say the biggest selling feature that will uh, convince uh, people to, to really want to, to use DPVs in the future going forward. So uh, originally when I got into the CUDA 650 I had of course not owned any DPVs prior and I was relatively new to diving but honestly within 30 minutes of being in the water with it you figure out exactly how to use it. It's very easy. Um, it adds a lot of air time in terms of being able to, to not run out on your tank. It also extends your range. You can really uh, experience an entire rec site in, in one go. So I would say that they are well worth the money that you'll, you'll spend to own a DPV. And it's a good way to not only extend your dive time, but extend the, the whole experience. You know, everything you're going you're gonna to see underwater. And um, it's, it, it, adds a, it adds a new dimension to be able to just smoothly move underwater. And I think the modularity of the P1 is going to make it so that I end up holding my DPVs uh, out, uh, out of the garage and into the, uh, into the water uh, a lot more often. All right, thanks for watching this review. This is Trenick from Epsos Dive Shop in Gatineau, Quebec. I'm gonna go try this thing out.